Well, good morning everyone and welcome again to this time of prayer and reflection. Um, I've been, uh, I've had feedback from several people after last time uh, telling me that the sound is good again um, and they can now hear me so I hope that's um, that's the case today as well. Um, today uh, we're going to um, hear a reflection kindly prepared for us by Reverend Roger Kenwood um, based on a reading from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Uh, but before we do that um, I'd just like to say something about today because um, um, today the church commemorates Eglantine Jeb, founder of Save the Children and a committed Christian um, who died on this day on the 17th of December in 1928. Um, she was a researcher into child poverty in Cambridge, um, later became an aid worker working with, uh, working with aid to children in the Balkans and in Central Europe uh, before and during the First World War, um, starting her work with children in the Balkans in 1912 as the war in the Balkans broke out there. Um, she was a committed Christian, but she was also very, um, very strategic. Well, I'm saying she was also. Um, many Christians are both strategic and um, social reformers. Um, she was uh, one such person um, who founded Save the Children um, as a charity. It became one of Britain's lead leading charities um, after the First World War. Um, and her heart was very much with children. Um, she wrote the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which uh, was accepted by the League of Nations in um, 1924, and it later became the foundation for the UN Declaration of uh, the Rights of Children. Um, and I think that this is, uh, she's someone that we can have as an example today, especially now that we see uh, the coronavirus pandemic is um, such a magnifying glass, magnifying the differences um, the social inequalities that have already been uh, very much present in our society um, and that we can keep um, her in mind as an example of um, Christian faith as an inspiration for um, social justice and social reform. Um, anyway, uh, I'll get on, <laughs> I'll get on with the uh, time of prayer and reflection that we're meant to have now. Um, let's light our candles as we start now um, in firm faith that Jesus Christ is with us and that he will come again in glory. God, for whom we wait and watch, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our reading today is from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Um, and for those following in your Bibles at home, um, I'll be reading chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, and then verses 13 to 16. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us to the effect of the day of the Lord is already here. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you 
as the first fruits for salvation, through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good, good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. This is the word of the Lord. So a reflection very kindly prepared for us by Roger Kenwood. So in Roger's words. This is undoubtedly one of the most difficult passages in the whole New Testament, writes a well-known biblical commentator on this chapter. So I felt initially that I would skip it and choose one of the easier readings for today. But we need to face up to life's puzzles. And the second coming, or the day of the Lord, were not only a problem for the early Christians, but still today we are likely to be puzzled by those people who demonstrate in public with placards saying, the end of the world is nigh, repent and be saved. Especially when the present COVID pandemic makes us wonder whether they might be right. The day of the Lord is a frequent topic in the Old Testament prophecies with a variety of different interpretations. These ideas often became attached to the early Christians' teaching about the second coming of Christ. But Jesus himself made it clear that about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the Son, only the Father. But because the early church expected Jesus to come again very soon, even in their lifetime, it created a great sense of urgency for their mission to save as many people as possible before the end of the world. However, as the years passed by and there was no second coming, some Christians were asking, why the delay? While others, like the Thessalonians, were alarmed by some claims that the day of the Lord had already come. The simple truth for us today is like this. Firstly, just as this world had a beginning, so on some unknown day in the future it will end. Secondly, Christ has come into the world at the Incarnation to reveal the truth of God. So we do not need to wait and worry about a second coming, as Jesus has already revealed the nature of the Kingdom of God in his teaching and parables. As Paul taught, we Christians have a foretaste now of heaven and hell, of divine judgment and eternity, as Christ comes daily into our lives. So every day is a judgment day. Every day we experience the kingdom of God as we walk and speak with the Spirit of Christ. At our death we shall know, even as we are known in the presence of God. For some it will be heaven, for others hell. In conclusion, quoting from today's reading, verses 13 and 16. We ought always to thank God, because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved. He called you so that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may our Lord Jesus Christ give us eternal encouragement and good hope. Well, a very big thank you to Reverend Roger for his reflection for us today. Um, and I
And as we come now to our time of prayer, I think I forgot to mention initially that after the prayers today, I will be singing hymn number 27, Colours of Day, uh, after our prayers today. Um, just in case anyone wants to look that up, as um, Colours of Day. If you have a red hymn book, it's number 27. But as we come now to a time of prayer, let us lift up before God those known to us who are in need of our prayers at this moment. And we remember especially those for whom this pandemic has meant a threat to their lives or livelihoods those who are suffering either through illness or the loss of a loved one or through the consequences of the restrictions that affect us all. Heavenly Father, we lift up before you all those who are struggling at the moment. You know each one. You see and love all people and each individual and you know their struggles. And we pray that they may feel your presence with them, your comfort, your healing, and consolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, as we remember the way that Eglantine Jeb was inspired by her faith in you to uh, work for um, work for the rights of children and to fight child poverty we pray for all those who are um, worrying about feeding their families over the holidays All those who feel an extra burden as they see our society so focused on consumption and celebration when they are unable to take part in that. And we pray for Save the Children and for all charities working to alleviate child poverty. And we pray that they may have the resources they need to help those who need it. Show us all what a generous heart looks like. And create generosity in us. Even as we are so painfully aware of our own shortcomings when it comes to remembering others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those in authority in this country and around the world. We give thanks for the international collaboration to develop vaccines against this pandemic.
And we pray that just as this pandemic has been a magnifying glass, magnifying the differences and um, the inequalities that we see, we also pray that it may become a catalyst for more cooperation, more unity and more openness. And in this country, we pray for our, uh, for our government as they seek uh, a way forward for this country, both through the pandemic and with, um, with Brexit negotiations now um, and trade agreements. We pray for all those involved in those negotiations, um, that they may have both wisdom and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We gather all these prayers into one as we say together the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we've come to our hymn. Colours of day.
the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.